what's up everybody welcome back to unparalleled universe for another top 10 video and today what we're talking about are my top 10 domestic slash retail slash easy to get slash kind of inexpensive figures of 2022 so this list is not going to contain any mezco or any imports or anything like that and we're also not going to have any marvel legends in here because i already did a list for marvel legends that's on my channel now be sure to check that out but i kind of like to break it down because there's just so many different types of things to consider when putting together these lists and thinking about your favorite figures of the year you know so i like to i like to kind of <laughs> break it down into different types of categories and that's what we have in this video um, everything in this video can be picked up either like at target or amazon or like a comic book store just like somewhere near you you could probably pick up most of these figures so uh yeah that's what this list is about and just like all my other lists the rules are kind of shaky you know don't get too caught up in the <laughs> in the rules on my list here because i like to go all over the place there's a couple of spots that are shared between a couple of figures you know i, I do all kinds of crazy shit in my list um because these things are all just for fun and it's not really about like you know calling certain figures better than other figures i like to do these videos just to appreciate as many cool figures as possible so that's what we're doing today but let's go ahead and get right into it because there were so many good figures this year it was crazy every single brand gave us something amazing so i'm excited but uh let's go ahead and start it off by taking a look at the honorable mentions Alrighty, so here we have six figures that are all absolutely good enough to make it into my top 10 but there just wasn't enough room, so I had to put them into the honorable mentions category. And this was very tough for me because there's a couple of figures here that I really wanted to put into the top 10, but I just couldn't make it work. <laughs> but yeah, man, all six of these figures are awesome. But let's go ahead and take a look, starting off with the NECA Slash. And this is based on the way that he appeared in the Archie comics. And I think that NECA did a really great job on this guy. Lots of good articulation for a figure um, you know, with a design like this, that he's kind of big and bulky. They were able to fit some good articulation in there, some really nice sculpting. And I just like the presence that the figure has. It, it very much so reminds me of Wolverine, not only because the claws, but just because the stature and attitude just kind of reminds me of, of Logan, you know, and I like it quite a bit. Yeah, NECA killed it on this figure, especially on the head sculpt. I absolutely love that guy. He's one of the ones where I, I, I wanted to put him into the top 10, man. I really did. And then next up, we have G.I. Joe Classified Stalker. And you know, Hasbro is straight up killing it with G.I. Joe this year. Every single figure that they put out, you know, could make it onto anyone's top 10 list. They have all been awesome. But I think Stalker came out really, really good. Um, I think that he has a lot of reuse, but they disguise it so well that it's hard to tell. So they killed it on this guy. I think this is a great figure. And then keeping with G.I. Joe, we also have Storm Shadow. And I've got to say, like, I'm not a huge G.I. Joe guy, but if I was, man, this figure would probably make me cry because <laughs> they did such a great job with it. To me, you know, from the outside looking in, this kind of feels like like the perfect Storm Shadow. Am I right? Let me know in the comments. This figure is freaking awesome. I just don't have like a huge attachment to the character, you know, that's kind of what kept him out of the top 10. But he definitely deserves a spot there because Hasbro went all out on this guy and did a great job. And then next up, let's go ahead and grab the mummy, the NECA Universal Monsters mummy figure. And yeah, you know, NECA, once again, straight up killed it on this guy, beautifully sculpted, some great articulation, and he just has that creepy look that you want from, you know, any type of monster. So they did a great job on that. And then next up, we have the Dark Knight Returns Batman by McFarlane. And you know, it's no secret, I'm not the hugest fan of McFarlane toys, but every now and then they come through with something really nice and Batman is one of those figures. I did modify him a little bit to increase the articulation and once I did that I really fell in love with this figure. I was happy to see that he has thigh swivels which is something that McFarlane just doesn't like to do for whatever reason. They put it on here and it's awesome. And you know what I like about this figure? You know it's very comic book accurate which is nice and... There's other Dark Knight Returns Batman figures out there, but they're all very expensive. You know, Mafex has some really great ones. Mezco has a nice one. But it's cool to have like an affordable, easy to get one that's not going to cost you, you know, almost $100. This figure is like 20, 25 bucks. And I think it does the job really well. It's a very good Dark Knight Returns Batman. And speaking of McFarlane toys, bringing us to our final figure on the honorable mentions list. We have the Warhammer 4000 Gene Stealer by McFarlane Toys. And man, this thing is freaking awesome. 
The sculpting is incredible. The articulation is extremely well done. Just everything about this thing is awesome. This is one of those rare cases where McFarlane Toys just killed it on every single thing about the figure, you know. I don't have any complaints about this. And I don't know anything about Warhammer. I have no connection to it. But this thing is just amazing. I want to get a couple of these. Like, even though I have no attachment to this type of monster, I have no knowledge about where it comes from or anything. It just works for a really good, generic, creepy monster. Imagine having, like, two or three of these attack, like legends or gi joes or whatever you know you could really come up with some great stuff with these figures this is definitely one of mcfarland's best figures in my opinion um the creepy bloody look that he has going on on the claws and the mouth and stuff it's very disturbing this thing is is awesome i really like this figure and uh yeah with that that's the honorable mentions let's go ahead and get into the top 10 so starting off the list at the number 10 spot we have the masterverse 40th anniversary he-man by mattel I'm a big fan of the Masterverse line, and I think this He-Man might be my favorite figure from the line so far. I think Mattel did a great job of bringing like a lot of the, the aesthetic of the original figure and bringing it into the modern age with this guy. It definitely feels like an upgraded version of that original figure with all the things that we like to see on our modern action figures these days. He's got double-jointed knees, double-jointed elbows, all pinless, a great sculpt. Some nice articulation, some great details. A lot of people don't like the head sculpt. I think it's fine. I feel like they were they were shooting to recapture the look from that original figure. And in my opinion, I think they did a pretty good job with it. But yeah, man, this guy's awesome. There's not a whole lot to complain about, really. I know some people don't like the proportions, but you know, it's supposed to capture the look of that old figure, and I think it does that successfully. But yeah, man. Being somebody that doesn't really care about He-Man, you know, as soon as I opened this figure up, I was really, really happy with it. Um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I think it's fun to pose around and play with, and it just looks awesome. So that's why he landed at number 10 on my list. And at the number 9 spot, we have kind of a weird one. What we have here is the Hasbro Fortnite Victory Royale series, Sky. And you know, I think the standard version might have come out the year before last. I'm not 100% sure. If it did, it was very late in the year because I noticed that all the reviews started to come out very early last year, like January, February. And, um, you know, I started to see the figure in store around that time. I didn't buy her until mid-July. And then the Ghost version actually just came out a couple of months ago. So, in my mind, I think she qualifies. And I wanted to include her because although I know nothing about Fortnite, don't know anything about this character, I absolutely love this figure. When I first purchased the standard version, it was on clearance for like 11 bucks or something. And I've got to say, it's the best like 11 bucks I've spent on an action figure like in modern times, you know. I was so satisfied with this purchase. I love this figure. I couldn't put it down. She has some great articulation. She has a pretty cool design, you know. It's kind of wacky and goofy and stuff. You could kind of use her for like a random civilian or whatever but the figure is just so much fun some great articulation some of the best articulation i've seen on a female figure from hasbro i think they really did a great job with it um, i really fell in love with this standard version and um, i was really happy to see when they came out with the ghost version i think uh, she looks a little bit more badass you know a little bit more serious so that's kind of cool but yeah man this figure right here has got to be like one of the biggest sleepers ever she is so cool. I know it's like such a random figure to be all crazy about, but yeah, I, I love this figure. Both versions are equally awesome. That's why I wanted to throw them both in here because they're basically the same. They're just different colors, you know. Uh, but man, this is such a cool figure. And you could still get this standard version for very cheap on Amazon. I think it's like 14 bucks or something. It's so worth it. This is such a cool figure. And that's why I had to get her on my list at number nine. I am going to cheat just a little bit and have two figures for number eight. Because I just couldn't decide which one of these guys I wanted to have on the list. I love both of these figures equally. And they are by far my favorite G.I. Joe classified figures so far. And what we have here is Spirit Iron Knife and Outback. And I think that Hasbro did a great job on both of these guys. You know, I don't know too much about G.I. Joe or anything like that. But obviously the figures are amazing. And they are straight killing it. And these figures definitely are some of the best that Hasbro has to offer so far. Look at these guys. And I've seen some amazing photography with both of these figures. People have been straight killing it. But Outback is amazing. He's got some great articulation, some really nice accessories, and some awesome sculpting work. I really like his head sculpt. 
and just everything about this guy. And same can be said for Spirit. I think uh, they really killed it on this guy. I love that he came with this bird. I apologize. I don't know the bird's name off the head. Don't kill me, G.I. Joe, you know, fans or what Joe fans. Um, but yeah, I love that they included the bird. And I think that Hasbro's doing a great job of including animals and doing like some fantastic work on those animals. Like Timber was nice. The bird is nice. Uh, the crocodile that came with uh, Croc Master was really well done. And yeah, they're doing a great job. And as soon as I saw Spirit, I was really excited about it. He's one of the few G.I. Joes that I actually, like, remember. Like, some of these guys, like Outback, when they showed him, it was like, oh, yeah, he looks like a G.I. Joe. That's cool, whatever. But when Spirit was shown, I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I remember him. And uh, he immediately jumped to the top of my most wanted G.I. Joes list. And when I finally got him in hand, I was very satisfied. But, yeah, man, both of these figures are amazing. And G.I. Joe Classified in general is just, it's an amazing line. Hasbro is really doing some awesome stuff. And I'm happy for G.I. Joe fans because people have wanted a 6-inch G.I. Joe line forever. And I'm happy that Hasbro finally got to it. And I'm even more happy that they're putting so much effort into it. Almost every single figure has been amazing. So shout out to Hasbro for killing it right there. But yeah, these two figures are definitely my favorites. And that's why I had to put them at number 8 on my list. And at the number 7 spot, we have the Jada Toys Invisible Man. So the Invisible Man is my favorite Universal Monster. And I think Jada Toys did an incredible job on this guy. It's nice to have like a fully articulated version of this character that you could play around with and get into some great poses. He's more poseable than you really need for the Invisible Man. So going above and beyond like that is really awesome. And I wanted to throw Wolfman in here too, just to show him some love because I like him for the same reasons, you know. Um, there isn't another fully articulated Wolfman out there. And I think Jada Toys did a really good job with this. So... Once again, I guess I'm kind of cheating. This is a shared spot for these two guys. But if I had to choose, I'd go with Invisible Man because he is my favorite Universal Monster. But man, Jada Toys killed it on both of these figures. They're a whole lot of fun to play with. They look great. They came with great accessories. And uh, yeah, man, I'm just really happy to have an Invisible Man that I could play around with. And I think Jada Toys is going to do some really amazing things in 2023 i'm really looking forward to their street fighter figures and i'm looking forward to what else they have in store but yeah shout out to them and uh, yeah they did a really nice job on these universal monsters figures so i know they're going to do a good job on other things that they have cooking and i can't wait to see it but for now invisible man is like the jada toys figure that i always go to and i'm just really happy with it that's why he is at number seven on my list and coming in at the number 6 spot, we have the NECA Gargoyles Bronx. And if you follow my channel closely or you watch any of my lives, then you're probably aware that I've been wanting a Gargoyles line for a very long time. And I'm happy that NECA are the ones to finally get to it because I'm a big fan of NECA. And for the most part, I've been really happy with the Gargoyles figure so far. Although I do think there are some things that need some adjustments and some changes they need to make like to the wings and a few things here and there but generally speaking I am a big fan of the line but I haven't been in love with any of the figures other than Bronx he's the first one that I was absolutely completely happy with I think that NECA did a great job with him I love how much articulation they were able to fit into the unique body style they did a good job with the paintwork and the sculpting and he's got a whole lot of attitude man I love the articulated jaw I like how you could have him looking to the side and you know, get him to crouch down. Look at that. That is awesome. <laughs> Such a cool figure. Uh, like I said, this is the one gargoyle figure that I absolutely have no issue with. I think everything on him is pretty much perfect. So this is by far my favorite gargoyle figure from NECA. Um, I can't wait to see what else they do though. You know, I can't wait to get some more gargoyles. Hopefully they make some adjustments to, to really perfect what they have going on. Um, I'm just really happy to have gargoyle figures though. And at this point, Bronx is definitely the best one so far. And that's why he's at number six on my list. Damn, he got a high spot. That's kind of dope. <laughs> and then at the number five spot, we have the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Last Ronin. And I have both of them here because either one of them could have taken the number five spot. But I'm going to give it to the armored version because he's the one that I prefer out of the two. But yeah, NECA really did an incredible job on this guy. He's got a whole lot of details, a whole lot of great weapons. He has some good articulation, although I did modify him just to get a little bit more out of it. But even without modifications, he's a whole lot of fun to play with, and he just looks amazing. And you know one thing that I that I personally really love about this figure? He, he's really easy to photograph. I had a whole lot of fun taking pictures of him, and that's kind of rare for me. So the fact that he photographs so well definitely 
helped him get such a high spot on my list. And man, I just love the fact that NECA jumped onto the last Ronin thing so quickly because it was such a big event for the Turtles. And I think that it really brought like serious Ninja Turtle stories to the forefront. And I'm happy that NECA jumped at the opportunity to give us figures from that story. I like that they're going to give us so many different characters from that book. And I think it's dope that they started off with the last Ronin himself. If you haven't checked out the book, I strongly recommend that you do because it is a fun, kind of dark, serious Ninja Turtle story. And I liked it a lot. And uh, yeah, these figures definitely enhance the experience. You know, like if you <laughs> go read the book and play with these figures, it's all just really dope. But yeah, NECA really killed it with these guys. And that's why I had to put the NECA Last Ronin figure at number five on my list. And then coming in at the number four spot, we have the Shaman Predator. And oh man, I freaking love this figure. This has to be the creepiest Predator figure that NECA has done so far. I think that NECA definitely has the Predator game on lock. They are killing it. All the Predator figures are really, really dope. Even though they're all very similar because they do share parts, I feel like NECA does a good job of adding things and changing things up to make them feel different. And I think Shaman is one of the best examples of that. You know, he does have this really cool soft goods cloak. He has a very unique head sculpt that has like a very like uh, old tribal kind of vibe to it. It's awesome. And then he comes with some great weapons, like this crazy axe. This thing is super dope. And uh, just like the Ronin turtle figure, I had a lot of fun photographing this guy. He's very easy to photograph. You could get him into a lot of creepy type of uh, poses and things like that. It's just a really disturbingly beautiful figure. <laughs> Man, that's a good way to describe it, I think. But yeah, I really love this figure. And uh, I'm a big fan of the NECA Predator stuff, so hopefully they keep on killing it and give us more figures that are as good as the Shaman Predator. And then coming in at number three, we have a figure that really caught me by surprise, and that's the Star Wars Vintage Collection, Obi-Wan Kenobi Dark Times Darth Vader. And just look at this thing, man. This is a beautiful figure. I'm not much of a three and three quarter inch guy. I mean, lately I've been getting like back into it. I've been buying like some vintage collection figures and I've been going back and buying Marvel Universe and I've been enjoying the little like, uh, <laughs> you know, the little journey down that path because three and three quarter inch figures are a lot of fun for other reasons than six inch figures. So, you know, I'm having fun, uh, but I've been enjoying vintage collection quite a bit. But this figure right here is by far the best vintage collection figure that I've picked up so far. Um, I absolutely love it. And yes, I did give him a custom soft goods cape with the wire in it. That came from the homie Harker Customs. You know, anything from Harker Customs is obviously going to enhance your figures quite a bit. But even without the custom cape, this Darth Vader was awesome. Like the cape he came with was cool, but I just preferred a wired cape and Harker Customs hooked it up right away. And, you know, as a result, it made the figure that much better. But man... I just love this thing. And it's crazy because this Darth Vader came with extra hands. And I feel like Hasbro hasn't given any Star Wars figures extra hands. That's something that a lot of us have been wanting to see in Black Series, but they just haven't done it. I was really happy to see that they did it with this Vader because having extra hands just does so much, you know, especially for a Force user. you got to have different types of hands. So I'm happy this guy had him. And yeah, man, just look at him. Such a beautiful figure. And like I said, definitely my favorite Darth Vader from Hasbro. Maybe my favorite Darth Vader, period, you know? I don't know if I could think of one that I like more than this. This guy has not left my side since I got him. He's been right next to my computer. I'm messing with him constantly, and I just absolutely love it. They need to give all Black Series figures the same love that they gave this Vader, and, you know, they, they would be onto something for sure. Uh, but this thing is incredible. That's why he's at the number three spot on my list. Holy shit. A three and three quarter inch figure breaking the top three. That is some crazy stuff right there. <laughs> and then coming in at the number two spot, we have the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Usagi Yojimbo. And hell yeah, NECA did an amazing job on this guy. Everything about this figure is freaking awesome. I love the way that he looks. The accessories are amazing. The articulation is okay. I mean, he doesn't have a whole lot of points of articulation, but there's definitely enough there to be able to pose the figure around and have a lot of fun. And yeah, man, this figure just has so much attitude and personality. It's just a perfect representation of Usagi Yojimbo. I would love to see them do like a true comic book accurate version one day. I think that'd be awesome. But for now, I'm really happy to have this version of the character because I don't have any other Usagi figures. So 
Um, it's really dope to have this really nice version of the character on my turtle shelf. And I think he's one of the best NECA turtle figures, period. And that's why he's at number two on my list. Damn, he got a high spot. How cool is that? And coming in at number one, we have the Marvel Select Better Ray Bill. Hell yeah, Bill coming through, taking the number one spot. And to be honest with you, it wasn't even close. There wasn't another figure on this list that was remotely close to taking Bill off of the top because this figure is freaking awesome and I love it. I'm a big fan of Better Ray Bill and I'm so happy that Marvel Select showed him some love. I like this modern look for him. I love the Stormbreaker effect. Everything about this figure is awesome. He's big, so articulation is a little limited, but for a big character, you could definitely pose him up and have some fun with it. The sculpt is amazing. They really did an incredible job with all the details and the paint and everything. The cape is nice too. It is hard plastic, but it's not it's not too big and it doesn't really get in the way or anything. But another thing that's cool about the cape is that it's removable. So if you want to take it off, you could throw a soft goods cape on there and it wouldn't be too much of a hassle. But yeah, man, look at this guy. It's so badass. I love this figure, man. I would love to see somebody do a classic Better Ray Bill, whether it's Legends, Mafex, or Select, whoever. I would love just more Better Ray Bill figures, but man, I'm just so happy that uh, Marvel Select decided to give, a, give us this guy because it's such a random character, you know, and they really went all out on it. So yeah, I freaking love this figure. And that's why he's my number one on this weird uh, top 10 that I got going on. <laughs> yeah, Better Ray Bill at the number one spot. Hell yeah. That's it. That's my top 10-ish kind of, give or take, domestic slash retail figures of 2022. Man, it was such a great year to be an action figure collector. There is no shortage of amazing action figures out there. All these different companies are putting out some crazy stuff like... I feel like every company put out something amazing this year, and that's awesome to see. So I'm a very happy collector at this point. It was cool to get figures from all over the, the nerd spectrum. You know, we have G.I. Joes, He-Mans, Turtles, Predators, Marvel, Fortnite, Star Wars. Like, <laughs> there's so much stuff out there. It's pretty damn amazing. So um, it's an exciting time to be a collector, and all of us should be really grateful that there's so many options out there, you know, because it wasn't always like that. Let me know what you think about this list. Also, let me know some of your favorite figures that would fit this criteria. I'm really interested to read some of that. Hopefully, I'll discover something I'm not aware of. But yeah, man, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I hope all of you have a great day. Um, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Also, hit the bell notification so you know every time that I go live. If you're not aware, I go live every Tuesday at 7 p.m., every Friday at 7 p.m., and every Sunday at 10 a.m. to strictly talk about comics. So come through. Let's talk about toys on Tuesday and Friday, and let's talk about comics on Sunday. Thank you very much. Peace.